So we're talking about this thing called inductive reasoning. Have y'all ever heard of inductive reasoning before? Huh? What? Yes. Yes. No. Um, all right, so let's, let's define some terms before we talk about inductive reasoning. A conjecture. No? Nope, I've heard of it. Heard of it? What do you think it means? Isn't it like your idea or something? One more time? Isn't it like your idea on something? Nope. So a conjecture would be uh, the, the literal definition of a conjecture, or as close as I can get off the top of my head, is a, uh, a statement based on observation. A statement based on an observation. Now, if I ask you to give me a conjecture, what would that sound like? You can have a beer. Okay, that's a good one. Is that true, though? Yeah. How, like, so, an observation. Can you see my beard? Yeah. So I could give you a counterexample and say, you're wrong. I shaved it last night. You're wearing a red jacket. That would be a statement based on an observation. All right? Is there any way to dispute that? No. No, there's not. You kind of feel good about conjectures? What, can you think of another conjecture? I'm trying to build this up so that I can tear it down later. Go ahead. This is geometry class. This is geometry class. Yeah, you this is pre-AP geometry. Okay, good. Is there any way to argue that? Mm, no. No, all right. So inductive reasoning is, how do you say this correctly? Um, inductive reasoning is, is stating a pattern based on observation. Or it's stating an observation based on pattern. Sorry, did I say that backwards? Yeah. Oh man, the lag is hard today. So can you use inductive reasoning to make an observation based on a pattern that you've seen? Go ahead, try it. The ceiling tiles are white. The ceiling tiles are white. Does that imply a pattern? Is that a pattern? Okay, oh, so you're looking at the actual pattern on the flag. Yeah. Um, so in geometry, a pattern implies like a reoccurring series of things. So when I asked you about the white tiles in the ceiling, is that a, is that a true conjecture, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what about the class next door? Does it have white tiles? Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So you said flags have Red and white stripes on them. Well, does every flag in every classroom have red and red, red and white flag stripes on it? Yes. American flag, yeah. So now we're getting very specific. On the American flag, on the American flag in every classroom, there is red and white stripes. So let's jump into the counterexample. What do you think a counterexample is? Um, so a counterexample is a statement. That proves a conjecture false. So 
So, your, your counterexample has to be a specific example, very, very, very specific. So we go back to your conjecture about, or your, your inductive reasoning statement that the ceiling tiles are white. Now, can anybody provide a counterexample for that? What's that? Yeah, I have to be nitpicky on this, right? That one is not white, is that what you said? Yeah, because it's got different colors on it. Okay, so can we make that a specific counterexample? Go ahead. There are certain tiles in classrooms that are not all white because they have different colors on them. So let's try a, a, like a non-ambiguous example, and then we'll go back to this other one, all right? <laughs> Here's the conjecture. All birds fly. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you for a specific counterexample. Dodo birds. Penguins. Ostrich. Penguins. Ostrich. You're almost there. Mm -hmm. Right now it just sounds like you're naming birds of the aviary species. Mm -hmm. Ostrich is a bird. That does not fly, so it's very specific. A penguin is a bird that does not fly. So it is still true for the hypothesis, but it fails for the conclusion, right? It is a bird, but it doesn't fly. Let's try a different one. Uh, apples are red. No, green apples are not red. So you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a Granny Smith apple is green, right? It's a specific counterexample. Uh, deer have antlers. Female deer. Female does. Females. So does don't have antlers. This is my favorite one. Austin is the capital of Texas. No, Austin is the capital of Texas. So is there a counterexample? Is there a counterexample for every statement? No, but Austin is the capital of Texas, so it has to be true. We still have to talk about Austin, but is there an instance where Austin is not the capital of Texas? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Before Austin became the capital of Texas, it was not the capital of Texas. Here's the, here's the counterexample. Austin is a student in my fifth period class. <laughs> Hate it, right? So the first part is still true. Austin, that's the, the hypothesis of this conjecture, is the capital of Texas. So I'm trying to prove that Austin still exists but is not the capital of Texas. So we go back to the ceiling tiles. Full circle here. All ceiling tiles are white. You would say false. Mr. Banker has one ceiling tile that is not white. Mr. Banker has two, three, ha <laughs> right? We start count chocolate. Perfect. What was the other one that we talked about? All the uh, flags in the classroom have red and white stripes. No, only the American flags. So is there American flags in every classroom? I think so. I mean, there should be. So you, uh, now that you're kind of understanding the process, so we're going to kind of start with inductive reasoning. I'm going to ask you guys to make some observations, to make some conjectures. There's going to be some patterns involved with this, and then we'll kind of loop in some more geometry as we go farther. Describe how to sketch the fourth figure in the pattern. Then sketch the fourth figure in the pattern. So th this is probably, you know, probably don't have to write this down. This will be recorded, but I want, I'm interested in the conversation here. Don't get, your, don't get your feelings hurt. Go ahead, who wants to try it? Describe it. You can put a diagonal line through the top left corner and the bottom right corner. Okay. The fourth figure shaded region is smaller than the shaded region if she described that to you, could you accurately draw the fourth figure? No. no. Well, if you look at them, they keep getting smaller by 
What is they and what is them? What's figure three? Do you think that figure four is a rectangle? Aha. Yes. Uh -huh. So figure four is described as a rectangle. Start with a rectangle, still a rectangle, still a rectangle. So figure four is a rectangle. Horizontal. Horizontal line in the center. Okay. With 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 three vertical lines with the farthest left bottom box shape. I would say this figure four is divided or the figure four is a rectangle divided into four equal pieces or eight equal pieces. Right? Eight equal pieces. So that can be drawn differently though. Those are equal? But it can be drawn like that So it, so as you describe it, it is a rectangle that is cut horizontally and then it is divided equally vertically and the lower left hand corner is shaded. Now if you saw that multiple choice, would you be able to pick out the next pattern? Good. All right, so let's try a different one, a little more geometry E. No, this is just more mathy. Des describe the pattern in the numbers, then write the next three numbers in the pattern. So describe it, then solve it. I promise there's a fun one at the end. Who wants to describe it? Not the way I want it described? Okay, well give me your student definition of it. Well, like, describe what's, what's happening. Describe the time. Times four. Yeah. Times four, right? Yeah. That's that's a generic definition that is acceptable. But the one I'm looking for is multiply the previous term times four. That kind of makes sense? Yeah. So negative one times four is four. So previous term negative four times four. So as we do times four times four times four, what are the next three terms in the pattern? One twenty-eight. That's times two. Negative two fifty-six. The calculator is only as far as the person using it. <laughs> Negative. 4,096. Good. Feel good about that? That's definitely on your quiz. So just like that, describe the next term in the pattern. Yes, sir? Are going to be doing like the nth term equation and stuff like that? Not right now, okay. but in the class we will. Are you talking about writing an equation to describe the nth term? Yeah. No. No, no, no. Okay. That would be okay. Here we go, now it's geometry. Given five non-collinear points, make a conjecture about the number of ways to connect different pairs of the points. So your conjecture is skeletonized down here. It says you can connect five non-collinear points blank different ways. That is your conjecture, that is your statement based on observation. So we have to figure out how many different ways can you connect Five non-collinear points. So here's one point. How many connections can you make? Zero. Here's two points. How many connections? Three. Three points, three connections. Four points have six connections. Now, if you're counting, that's good because you can verify your conjecture. But I'm asking you to find a better way to use that. Use inductive reasoning to find it. Well, right. What do you got, Jenna? The correct answer is 10. 
And how many of you guys got there this way? Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. So I could ask you, Blake, like how many ways can you connect six non-collinear points? It would be 15 different connections for six non points. Cool, right? So the conjecture, you can connect five non points ten different ways. That's the conjecture, your statement based on observation. I don't, I don't know why. That's why I covered it up. I think it was silly. Okay, I hope. I hope. Skip it. I want to do that one. Yes. It's my favorite activity. I love this activity. This is the last thing we're going to talk about as far as patterns go. So I'll give you a minute, a small minute, just to absorb that uh, geometrical diagram into your mind. Um, I will do a small side note that there is no blue line there. Whenever I like created these diagrams, I just had the blue line tool and I didn't want to go back and make it black. So it's, they're all black and white. Cool? All right. What do you notice about the first, third, and fifth shapes? The rotation to the left. Hold on to that. They repeat themselves. The, the, the shape repeats itself with the no. Okay, and why am I shaking my head no? Because we're in geometry and shapes have names. The circle. Circle. Is the first, third, and fifth shape all circles? Perfect. First observation. They are circles. Okay. Then you said. What is they? Circles. Okay. How do you know that they are rotating? What signifies the direction that the uh, shape hopefully. is being rotated? So if it rotated right, the black side would be on the right. We see a black side? And a? So it is half colored. colored or half shaded. So we have circles that are half shaded. I know it's obvious, but we have to state it. So you have circles that are half shaded and they are rotating. We need to have a specific direction for the rotation. Counterclockwise. So circles, half shaded, rotating. Counterclockwise by 90 degrees. You'll learn that in topic seven. We all get it. Rotate counterclockwise degrees. Counterclockwise 90 degrees. Perfect. Is there anything else we can state or conjecture about those first, third, and fifth shapes? Maybe. What do you notice about the second, fourth, and sixth shapes? Okay, the second one's a triangle. Okay, y'all are going to struggle with this one. I'm going to enjoy this. But go with the obvious one first. What's the most obvious thing that they all share? The dots, right? Okay, what do you specifically about the dots? They share the line. same dots in the same location. On the shape. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't like the word shape. <laughs> I don't like the word shape. I'm ignoring that one. <laughs> okay, guys, describe the dots to me as if I'm blind. There's one black dot. Perfect. One black dot is where? On the top. Okay, at the top is a black dot. And two, two white dots. At the bottom, we have two open circles, or two white dots. Here we go. Now we have to describe the shape. The triangle? No. The fifth shape is not a triangle. It's a triangle. I'm sorry. The fourth shape is not a triangle. 
The six shape is not a triangle. One's a triangle. Quadrilateral. Close. Yeah, it's close. But the first shape is a triangle, not a quadrilateral. The first shape is a triangle, and the second shape is a triangle. Poly. The second, fourth, and sixth shape are all polygons. Uh, and now, now we can finally make it back to the original statement. Who said about the sides thing? Okay, polygons, and this says. We're adding two sides each time. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go with that one because it I, it works for you, but it doesn't work for me. There's a better way to describe it, and I think we're going to stumble onto it here in a second. Okay, So I'm going to flip pages. The pictures are going to stay there. Draw the next two shapes in the sequence. So what goes here? A circle. Black side to the right. Yes. yes. Is that going to do it for y'all? Okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And let me go back in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. The eighth shape will be. <laughs> A polygon. a polygon with nine, nine, sides. nine sides. Please just go with it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that's good. Nice. Yeah. Great. It looked good. All right, let me look at yours. That's what I thought. <laughs> what else is specific about that polygon? One black dot at the top. Two white dots at the bottom. Yeah. Perfect. Who said that? Per circle. How did you know it was a circle? Because the circles are all odds. Circles are odds. Cool, right? So we know that will look like this. But. Up, down, left, or right? No guesses. I need factual, correct answers. Bet your life on it? Okay. Down, down, because it's on the five. Down, because it's on the five. I think it would be wise to draw the ninth shape in the series just to make some connections. So the ninth shape would be shaded on top. So at that point, you see the series start to repeat itself. So I, if you can count by odd numbers, it would go one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 25. So where is it shaded? On top. Okay, get over it. Describe, describe, describe the 30th shape in the pattern. It's a polygon. No, because it says describe, not draw. One black dot at the top, two white dots at the bottom. Yes, sir. 31 sides. How did he know that? How did it with each number or with each even number? Whose mind is blown right now? Okay, because the second shape has how many sides? Three. The fourth shape has? Five. The fifth or sixth shape? Seven. It is one more side than the number it is in the term. So the thirtieth shape has? 
31 sides. The hundredth shape has 101 sides. That's crazy, right? But it's an even number. Uh, this one always gets me. What is the 168th term? No, no, no. So we're looking at this pattern. So look, you guys have to learn how to use multiples. Right? It goes one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, or the same thing as four. So any multiple of four would be west. Four, eight, 16, 32, 64, or 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 160, 164, 168. Count by fours. That's how you get to your number. What about twos? Huh? So you count it by twos. It wouldn't work because it's a, it's a four term series. Right? So if it was like the 169th term, I could get to 168 and I have to count 169. Right? Um, before I leave this, this is my favorite numerical pattern ever. Next term in the pattern? Eight. Eight? Thirteen. How are you doing that? Twenty-one. How does your brain like that? That's the Fibonacci sequence. Yeah. Oh, what? What'd you call me? Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> zero plus nothing is? Zero. zero. Uh, and then you have to start with here. One plus zero? One. plus one? Two. Two plus one? Three. Three plus two? Five. Okay. Uh, I did miss this one. I, I, I wanted to give a like concrete counterexample that was indisputable. Um, a month that starts with the letter J is a summer month. January. January is the counterexample. J, January, yes, we have to say January starts with J. It fits and it is a winter month. Good. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about is maybe make a conjecture about a polygon. All polygons have three sides. All polygons have three sides. Is this a polygon? Yes. Yes. Is this a polygon? Oh. Yes. Is that a polygon? Yes. Yes, it is. Somehow, some way, careful, careful, careful. Is that a polygon? Yes. Is that a polygon? No. So what is a polygon? All the shapes have sides. Any shape that is connected using. No, it's just a shape that has sides. Oh, the shape that can be 3D. Is that a polygon? Yeah. No. Like a polyhedron. Yes. Would it be any 2D? So a polygon is a two-dimensional figure. Figure. Okay, I was going to use the word figure. With, so that has, that has at least three straight sides. At least three straight sides. That connect. Oh, they have to connect. Okay, so one thing is they have to be connected. No. And they, the lines cannot cross. So a polygon is any two-dimensional figure with three or more sides. The sides have to be connected and they cannot cross. That's two triangles lumped together. So um, you're going to see some questions on your assignment that says, is this a polygon? They're yes or no answers. That should be pretty basic. 
and then we get to uh, something like this. I'm going to cheat and use my drawing tool if my computer will figure its life out. All right, um, what is the difference between, let's go with a fancy one, this, and I can do it, I can do it. Come on, computer. Uh, let's go with crazy, let's go with this one. You feel like you like that. What's the difference between those two figures? Is this a polygon? Yes. It's called a pentagon. Is this a polygon? Yes. That's called a 16 dot. Original. Facts. Yeah, that's when, when you, once you get past 12, you can just say the number. So what's the difference between those two things? One is more size than the other. I'm not, the computer is. Convex. I'm asking my computer to do a lot right now. Because I'm simultaneously recording this and streaming it. So this is a convex polygon. A convex polygon, if you connect any two vertices, on a convex polygon, it will remain inside the shape. On a concave polygon, if you connect any two vertices, it will fall outside the shape. Yeah. So I used to say convexed out, concave in. That's how I remember those two things. Wait, do that again? Convexed out, concaved in. Like a cave is something you can enter. Oh, okay. Right? So the last thing I talk about is how do you name a polygon? That is like a text box, isn't it? I'm trying to go to a new one. Slowly, carefully. Okay, how would you name that polygon? This could be polygon A, B, C, D. It cannot be polygon A, B, D, C. You have to go around in a circle. So you could start, it could be DABC, it could be DCBA, it could be BCDA. It doesn't matter as long as you go around the shape. All right? So you people that are at home, you have a worksheet that has a couple of patterns on it, a couple of shapes on it. It looks like this. It's going to be purely practice for you guys to work because you will have. I think the first four questions on your next quiz are just what's the next number in the pattern? What's the next shape in the pattern? All right. This is the easier stuff right now. Um, you guys will find creative ways to find loopholes in the problems. I get it. We need to keep practicing. So doing this is going to help you guys with that. Then we get to Monday or tomorrow. Sorry. We're working on our project. We're going to introduce the project. I'm going to show you all things project, and then I'm going to set you loose on it. You're going to get until September 30th to finish the project. We will not spend any more time in class besides tomorrow on this project. So, we didn't get our grades back for the test. No, like the back of paper only missed. Oh, but that's what everyone's finished with it. He said that earlier. I know, he's still working on it. Extra one? So, uh, I'm going to kill my recording. Thank you, online people. If you have any questions, just unmute yourself and ask.